the meetup game is on at Maryland Live. It's going to be December 2nd at 3 p.m. Maryland Live poker room. Just head upstairs. Uh, should be probably Jason or Ryan working that day and uh, having things organized for us. So it's going to run probably about seven hours, uh, maybe maybe a little bit longer. We've had some pretty long games before. If you guys don't follow me on social media, and this is the first you're hearing of this, you should. You should follow me on Twitter and my Facebook page, at MEV Poker for both. And then you'll hear about it in time, no matter what. So with that out of the way, let's get into the episode. Just got back from a run, which is uh, sort of wild because I haven't really been running. And it's been rough. <laughs> it's been a rough rough couple days of uh, trying to get back on track. So what this means is that running today was really hard, but I didn't have to do it that long to get a lot of reward out of it because I'm so, I'm so, it's just been a while, okay? Hopefully getting back into it, that's what we're gonna try to do. The WPT day one is today. First flight is today at noon, it's 9 a.m. I went to bed super early, like, like 9 p.m. Like you don't, I don't think you understand just how early that is for me. It's like, that's like if you went to bed at 6 p.m. I mean, I don't know you, so that might not be true, but I just sort of assume. <laughs> anyway, I am ready to go. I'm, I'm so pumped for today. I, this is the most prepared I felt for a tournament uh, in, I don't know, probably, probably since like the start of the WSOP. And it's crazy looking back on you know, like a year ago or two years ago or God forbid three plus years ago and the kind of prep that I had back then versus now um, and like A game prep versus B game prep, like it's kind of ridiculous. This might be the most prepped I've ever felt for a tournament. So, no pressure I guess. Alright, so maybe the hat doesn't fit me the best, but it's always exciting. Always exciting when the WPT comes to town. Kind of have to, uh, kind of have to wear it. It's, uh, it's a pretty big tournament. Brings in a lot of top players, and when it comes to Maryland Live, you wouldn't caught me dead missing it. So, coming into day one, it's a pretty unique tournament if you are not traveling the circuit, if you're just playing locally. This is one of the biggest events that yearly. It's a 3.5k main event, hour long levels, and it, it really draws a lot of runners for the size of the tournament it is. I think it ended up getting a ton of satellite entries this time, and so you end up with a kind of cool mix of uh, local regulars who are generally playing some smaller stakes events. You end up with some uh, kind of mid-level grinders who drive in, and then you end up with some top pros who come in from out of town and are really just flying around following the WPT. So players like Joe McKeon, uh, Rainer Kempe, and other top players who I couldn't possibly mention all of here. So starting out on day one, I felt like I had a pretty reasonable table draw. Um, there were a number of players who I recognized who were locals, and that's not to say that they are poor players necessarily, but there are a lot of players who are really world-class in the field. So coming in uh, and just having not really a Rainer Kempe, not really having a Joe McKeon, not having a Jesse Sylvia at my table, that was a, that was a pretty good draw from where I was sitting. So hopping right into the hands, you know, we start out very, very deep, but I did want to come in on time from the beginning, I just felt like I was going to be able to capitalize on people's mistakes at super deep stacks and be able to hopefully grow my stack and play from there. So starting out with blinds at 100, 100, no ante in play yet, and 40k starting stack. The button opens to 600. I actually call in the small blind with queen 10 of hearts. I think it would be reasonable to three bet here, but I felt that at this stage of the tournament, I didn't want to just start three betting a crazy amount. So I just call. 
We end up going heads up to the flop, and it comes down 10-9-5 with two diamonds and a heart, so definitely a pretty good board. I end up check calling 1k from the button. The turn is a six of spades, I check it again, and the button checks back this time. I expect to have the best hand extremely often um, when this happens, but the river kind of makes me even more sure because it is an offsuit queen. I decide to go pretty big here because I don't think I'll represent a queen very often, and I have a ton of missed draws available to me. I bet 4k, and he calls, and of course my hand is good here. Um, as far as what he had, it could have easily been that he ran into a queen and we just got really lucky. Uh, could have been that he had some kind of weird two pair himself. Um, but I think pretty likely we just got hero down by a week 10 or maybe even a hand like pocket eights or something like that. So we don't play our next uh, notable hand until a couple levels later. It's at the 100-200 level with a 200 big blind ante. And I've got 50k in my stack, so chipping up a little bit here. I've got aces in early position and I bump it up to 800, which is kind of around the table standard, maybe a little above the table standard. The button makes the call and the flop comes down 753 with two clubs. I decide to do something um, a little bit weird and I check it and the button checks back. I think on a board that's so connected and is so favorable for the preflop caller, I think it's okay to throw in some checks here. The turn is a three of clubs though, and I decide to bet now 1.3k and the button makes the call. The river is the seven of diamonds, and I I have very mixed feelings about the card at the time because at first it looks like a really bad card, but realistically I think he's betting most of his 7x on the flop when we check. So I actually think it's a pretty good river for us because now there's two pair on the board. We can potentially get heroed by just ace high um, as well as basically any pocket pair I think is never folding. So I put out a bet of 3.5k and he calls and again, my hand is good. So seeing a trend here, just really making hands and, uh, and getting paid so far. On this next hand, we are chipped up all the way to 60k. So already added about 50% increase to our stack. Blinds are 300-500 with a 500 big blind ante, and under the gun limps in, middle position makes it 2200, and I flat the button with pocket sevens. Under the gun calls as well, so we go three ways to a flop, which is eight deuce deuce with two diamonds. Under the gun checks, and middle position, who was the preflop raiser, bets 5k. I think it's a pretty clear just call here, no point in raising, but our hands can be good very often. So I put in the call, under the gun also calls, so still three ways on the turn. The turn's the jack of hearts and checks all the way to me. I think we could really go either way here. I think checking behind is okay, but there are a ton of river cards that are going to um, make people better hands, so I kind of like betting mostly for equity denial. It's like kind of a protectionish type bet. Don't think we're getting called by worse often, but under the gun might call one more time with pocket sixes or a flush draw, something like that. So I do decide to bet 10.5k, and they just both fold, so we get to take this one down nice and easy. This next hand is at the same level. We're chipped up again some more, uh, all the way to 80k now, so we've doubled since starting stack of 40k. And I've got aces again. Uh, yeah, got aces under the gun, and I bump it up to 1.3k. Middle position, the button, and the big blind all call those. We're four ways to the flop this time, which comes down queen 4-3 with a club draw. I decide to see bet. I think when we're so multi-way and when there's a queen out there, even though there's a flush draw, it's not as connected and low as the previous time we had aces, so I think a value bet is definitely in order. I see bet 4k and only middle position calls, so pretty much the ideal outcome I would say getting heads up here. The turn's a five of hearts and I decide to check now. I think it's going to be hard to get three streets when we uh, see bet into multiple players. If we continue barreling, I think it looks really strong. So I just decide to check it, and he ends up betting 8.5k. I of course call, I'm never folding here, and the river comes, not the best card in the world I would say, it's the king of hearts. So it does brick the flush draw at least, and that's pretty good, but the king also is going to improve him to two pairs sometimes, and it's a little bit hard to see him bluffing twice when we take this exact line. Um, but I still think we're probably check calling most of the time with a hand that is as underrepped as this. I think it's at least possible that when we check, we'll see a bet from just a queen. So I do check and we face a bet of 15k 
and as planned, uh, I just put in the call here. We actually get to beat pocket sixes, so he was betting even wider than I really thought he could be in the moment. Not really sure if he was betting for value or kind of just as a little bit of a weird uh, river bluff just in case that he could get me off of like pocket tens or something. Um, not sure if I like it or not. I haven't thought too much about the hand from his perspective, but I was surprised to see it, but very happy to just get to take it down. So the day has been obviously going really well for me at this point. Most of the hands I've played, I've been winning. The hands that I haven't won, we haven't really talked about because they've been so just short and straightforward and um, we didn't really lose a lot of chips in any of them. So we hit the dinner break with 125k in our stack uh, and coming back to something like 300, 600 blinds, which is awesome. Having 200 bigs uh, still on dinner break is a really good spot to be in. The next interesting hand that we play is at the 400, 800 level with an 800 big blind ante though, and we have 140k, so a bit under 200 bigs, but still with a great stack for sure. The hijack opens up to 1.8k, the small blind calls, and I call in the big blind with 10-9 offsuit. This is a little bit of a loose defend. I don't think we have to by any means, um, but I'm not sure if I had any notes about them, like if I had any experience with them that made me particularly want to play this hand. Looking back, I think it would be pretty reasonable to just fold it pre. But the flop comes down, king, 10, nine with two diamonds, and we're in pretty great shape here. We check to the hijack and he bets 3K. It folds to me and I decide to just call here out of the rather than check raising i think that check raising definitely has merit um we can get it in against uh some flush draws some of the time but we are so deep that i felt if tons and tons of blinds went in we might be isolating ourselves against queen jack a little bit more than we would like isolating ourselves against like pocket kings or king 10 and king 9 having bottom two here even though it's a vulnerable hand and it definitely has a ton of value I thought that just calling was going to be okay, and we could kind of play a little bit better on good runouts and bad runouts by doing this rather than bloating the pot now. So I decided to just call. The turn comes the beautiful deuce of hearts. It is a brick, aside from bringing a backdoor flush draw possibility in. I check, he bets 7k, and this time I decide that now we should probably be trying to get a little more value in. So I make a small check race here to 18k and he calls. The river is the ace of clubs, and I really didn't like this card at all. I thought that ace king was a pretty sizable portion of his range, definitely a hand that we were trying to get value from on the turn, and it now feels like, even though I sh probably shouldn't have an ace that often if I bet, um, he's gonna feel really uncomfortable with a hand like king, queen, and king jack to the point where I wasn't sure if we would get a ton of value. Now that being said, it's a little bit hard to know like what level people are thinking on and whether that's really the case. So I did think a bet was probably in order, but I decided to bet pretty small, um, try to coax in what I felt like would be a mostly king heavy range into a call and not force myself to be only up against really good hands. So I bet 15K, slightly less than my turn raise, he snap calls, and I was a little bit worried at the snap. I felt like I wanted him to tank call, but my hand is good. He doesn't show, and we get to take down yet another one. So chipping up very steadily here, I've been really lucky just having uh, really fortunate runouts, really fortunate spots where I'm able to value bad and just get called by worse. And so we're still, we're still chipping up here. We've got 180K blinds now at 501K with a 1k big blind ante, and I open up the ace-queen offsuit in the button to 2200. The big blind is uh, new to the table, and it's actually Ali Imsirovich. I hope I'm saying that right. All in Ali on uh, social media. Guy I've actually been following for a long time and who's just a total crusher. He's had a stellar 2018. Uh, he won the purple jacket at the Poker Masters, and he's just seemingly on every single final table in existence this year. So he's in the big blind. Um, he makes it 7,500 as a three bet. He's just rebought and lost a couple small hands. He wasn't at our table before. I know this is at least his second bullet, might be his third. 
I don't think that's super relevant with a player like this, though. He's not going to tilt because he's in for a few bullets or whatever. Um, but the point is, he doesn't have nearly as many chips as most of the other people at the table because he is basically rebuying and probably pushing some very small edges uh, trying to build a stack. So he's got about 27k behind after he raises to 7500. I decide that he's definitely going to 3-bet really wide here and probably just call it off with a pretty good portion of his range. So I just jam all in and he pretty much beats me into the pot with ace-10 suited. The board comes out pretty fortunately for us. We flop a queen on queen-9-5 with just one club. The turn is a 7 of hearts and seals the deal for us. The river irrelevant bricks out and we get to stack really a true hero here so i don't normally get starstruck by players i i don't really get overly um you know i don't lose my cool just because someone who's a tv pro or whatever sits down but i gotta say i've been following this guy for a couple of years on social media really love watching him win and crush and i think of him more as being a really inspirational player certainly identify with a lot of these like younger guys who are kind of coming up so pretty cool to stack him here even if it's kind of just a cooler here uh button versus blinds and with the way both of us are going to play this spot but nonetheless nice to pick up his stack here and uh pretty cool hand he actually ends up rebuying and coming back to our table again and busting again although i didn't really play any hands with him on this run Later on in the day, we end up having several kind of higher profile players come to the table. Um, trying to remember who else would have would have been around. Um, we did have Christian Harder, who's actually the Maryland Live ambassador for the poker room. He was at our table for a while, and the table definitely got tougher in the last level or so. When I have so many chips and when I'm starting to be up against some really tough opponents some really elite players i thought that i could kind of just tighten up sort of chill until the end of the day and hopefully come into day two still with a pretty good stack that's pretty much what ended up happening uh i bagged a little over 200k and that's going to be you know good for over 100 big blinds on day two so not really much of a sweat at the end of the day there one and lost some medium-sized pot, but nothing quite so big as what was happening earlier in the day where I was just constantly chipping up. 